Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to another Minecraft discussion. My name is Kimberly Quinn, and there's little Giovanni, and we are hosting you today with all kinds of pizzazz. And as you look behind me with the snow and the beautiful beaver pond number two, they're sort of like attached. I'm, that little one's kind of like a hot tub to the pool kind of thing. And yes, it's still April up in northern <laughs> northern Vermont. So uh, there's Giovanni. Something about the hard snow. He likes to really like scratches the itches or something. He's having a grand old time over there. So anyway, what G and I would like to talk about today is just the whole idea of, and we're talking about from a well-being standpoint, of just generosity. And uh, it's, you know, it's just so important. And obviously Aristotle talked about it. One of my favorite, you know, dead guys. What a great thinker. I mean, Aristotle actually used to say, this is totally paraphrased, and I did not plan it, I swear, um, that if we practice virtues, like we practice the piano or, you know, soccer or anything, how much better off the world would be. How much better off the world would be. And it's, and it's just, uh, again, enormously paraphrased. But it's true because people think, oh, so -and -so, oh she's so honest. Okay. We can't take genetics out of that whenever we're talking about human animals or non-human animals, right, Jay? Um, but the fact is, we can practice honesty or practice generosity and get better at it. Because anything we practice, we get, and, and you know, eventually we get better at it, even if it's robbing banks. It's just the truth. So the whole idea of being generous, and and I'm not, lot, lot, you know, I'm not. Um, you know, talking about religions here. We, well, we can talk about it for a second. Because you can pick anyone across the globe and they'll be saying the exact same thing. Might just be in different in different words. But we're talking about from a well-being standpoint. And we can even, you know, and psychologically we know that that being generous, you know, or what would be psycho in the psychology world we would refer to as pro-social behavior, doing things for other people, right? And, and we know for a fact that there's a dopamine fix. And maybe that's the universe's way or... Source with a capital S or God's way of, of keeping us doing, you know, good things for each other. Or even if you don't, you know, sort of subscribe. That's what my, my Minecrafters say now. If you don't subscribe, that's the word. So if you don't subscribe to any religion, totally fine. Like, who cares? Um, you can go with spirituality. You can just go with, with psychologically. Because no matter what, doing good things for people straight from the heart is good for us. What we do for others, we do for ourselves. I'm talking about neurologically. And look at that bluebird. I mean, Sky. Um, wow. Although, speaking of that, I had two jays out in the deck eating bird, bird, uh, bird food today, and they're squawking, squeaking away. They're so loud. I love them. Um, so anyway, so I was thinking of um, way back in it, when I was an undergrad at St. Mike's, like back when glaciers were shifting. Kind of looked like this, probably. And dinosaurs were, you know, large carnivores were eating us and things like that. Uh, I used to, uh, my, uh, my, my best friend from St. Mike's, Neela, if she's watching, uh, we used to go to, we used to go to this, this like hole in the wall, uh, Italian place called Bo's and it was really, really inexpensive. Like you couldn't cook for less and it was so good. And they ended up, this family ended up like selling it in jars later on. They're probably enormously wealthy and good for them. But that back then it was this hole in the wall and they just charged like just hardly anything like you pay for a Chinese buffet almost like it was even less than that anyway we used to go with a, with a, a friend of ours who happened to be a priest Father Vanderweel and, and we called him the wheel and he just had this he has this crazy laugh that I would really like to have for my ringtones it's like a hyena like this crazy happy hyena just I don't know it's a great laugh but anyway when we used to go out and for this for this and we used to pay this like minimal amount of money like I said for the best Italian food I mean like the level of Little Italy in Manhattan, I mean, just so good. We would go to, you know, my and my friend Neil and I were already generous, already, uh, very much so. And he would say, always be generous, always be generous. And, and maybe it was also so inexpensive. So but this was back in the 80s. So if it came, if the whole bill came to $15 back then, it was all well, maybe, let's say 20 but I don't think so. He would need like double. He said, always be generous, just always be generous. So, so the wheel, the wheel happens to be a priest. An Eddie priest, but it doesn't, that, it can be, you know, that, I'm just sharing that wisdom with you. It, if you pick, you know, go across the globe with, you know, culturally with religions, they're all saying the same thing. It all comes back to you, you know? And, um, I actually, on Easter Sunday, um, put up a quote that, you know, it's in giving that, that we receive, right? And that was St. Francis. So again, 
I mean, you just, you just go, go everywhere and it's just right there because it's so true. So we've been talking about mindful giving and mindless giving because they are different. And the kind that fills us up, obviously, is mindful giving. Mindless giving is when that's coming from the ego and we know by how we feel. So an example of mindless giving is uh, just sort of um, coming from a place of ego, which is obviously codependent behavior because... The ego is looking for approval and appreciation and all these kudos. So and I, so an example of this would be somebody's asked to bake brownies yet again for the PTO thing. And she's already resentful because nobody thanked her the last three times, right? She says, okay, sure. Or she's uh, taking everybody's kids to baseball because the other three... I'm not saying it's not good. To, we're talking about doing good things for people, right? So this is a, like a, a gray area. But there's a difference, though, if you're if you're in doormat mode and you're just sort of doing it over and over and over and over again for the approval. It's all about the attention. It's for the approval, and I'm such a nice person, and that's where I get my self-esteem from. That would be mindless giving, right? Mindful giving is when you're full throttle, all about the intention, and it's coming straight from the heart. Like, I, I want to, I don't want GCs over there, you know, to, to like, you know, staying up. Maybe that the best friend calls you at 3 o'clock in the morning with... It'd be better if it was, like, really great news, like, I don't know, but at 3 o'clock in the morning, it's not usually great news, right? So let's say she calls, and, and her heart's breaking or something, and she's, your, she's like, your, one of your best friends in the world. To stay up with her and listen to all that at 3 in the morning, that's, you, even though you might be physically tired, you're not going to be emotionally tired. You're going to be emotionally juiced, because you know that authentically, in that moment, she really needed you, and that, you know, your words soothed her spirit and calmed her calm her heart and mind and that would be an example of mind full giving mind full giving and so and we know by how we feel because one has us feeling depleted and one has and one is life-giving one is absolutely life-giving when we do you know awesome volunteer work and it doesn't have to be anything structured um it can be like you know volunteering in a soup kitchen or volunteering to coach a little league or whatever it doesn't have to be like that. It can be like on a daily basis. It could just be, you know, going out of your way for that person. It takes five minutes. And um, that's what that's what really feeds and fuels us. Like there might be might be somebody at, at your work who literally just needed five minutes of something. And it's not a situation where, where it set you back and you're feeling depleted and resentful. It's just like, well, I can, you know what, I, I, I can do this. I can be five minutes late to that meeting and you know, she's she's not feeling well, needs to go home right now. Or, uh, you know, she did, her babysitter just called and she has to leave and she has to leave right now. And, you know, to pinch hit for somebody, that's all mind, mindful giving. Um, obviously, as long as people aren't taking advantage. So anyway, the point is, generosity isn't just, I mean, isn't just good for the person we're giving to, but it's super good for us. It's really, really good for us. And it feeds into our... Um, it just feeds into our whole well-being thing when we are also generous. And uh, that's pretty much it, you know? What we do for other people, we do for ourselves. And no, it's not it. It's not. It was almost it. The other thing, because because we've also been talking about, um, you know, sort of like our, our number one job in this world is to keep ourselves filled up. So you got, so it's very important to pay attention to this because like, oh, she's saying two different things. So I'm saying, yes, it's important to go out of our way. Yes, it's important to pay attention to how we feel always because there's sadly, the, you know, the taking advantage of people um, to pay attention to how we feel. I don't know if you're mindfully giving or mindless giving. And also when we give, when we give, it also pulls us out of our own heads. And, and uh, you know, at least I'm, I'm aware very much so, especially because I'm immersed with my wonderful rock stars first years there's a ton of anxiety going on in this country and world and uh especially with this generation and a lot of it is they're locked in their heads they're they're really it's not with judgment I absolutely love them they know that I love them I adore them I tell them very frequently in fact this this semester I told them it was about two weeks ago because they I've always had always had, had phenomenal just wonderful experience with my rock stars for some reason I just this semester, I said, if I had one word to describe all of you, it would be sweet. They're just so sweet. Um, so, so anyway, what I tell them is, um, 
you know, it's very Gandhi, who I'm paraphrasing, right? So they, this leads, the generosity thing leads into what I'm saying. So just stay with me here. Gandhi would say, you know, if, if you're feeling down, you're feeling blue, get out and do something for somebody, you know, because yes, we need to feel, keep ourselves filled up so that we can do this. So when we get trapped in our head and all of our own drama and all the, in allowing all those thoughts, we talked about that a lot because that's what Minecraft is about, is thought gate, gatekeeping your own thoughts. Well, when you get good at this, it saves life, min life minutes, it clears your head, it fills you up, and then you're in a place to give generously, just overflowing generosity. And then that takes us out of our own heads into a better place. And we can, it minimizes our own, it minimizes our own suffering because we become aware that uh, we're not the only ones with issues when you climb out of your head. There are people, no matter how you, they say like there's always a bigger fish, right? There's always somebody who's got something going on that's worse than what we have going on. And, it, and it's not to say to minimize whatever that happened. It's just saying to, to gain awareness that it's a big world out there and lot, there's lots of stuff. And I, I think when we are generous on a daily basis, even on a teeny, tiny, itty, bitty level, you know, paying it forward, buying that person next to you a cup of coffee or, or if it's working, it's free anyway, but going to get one and bring it to some, just little stuff just really helps to pull us out of our own head. It feeds the spirit. If we talk about the bucket, it puts drops in our bucket by putting drops in their bucket, right? When we put drops in somebody else's bucket, drops then are put into our bucket. It helps to keep us full. So really, like, like, like the wheel said, always be generous. He would just say, you can't go wrong with it. How could it possibly do anything but go good places? That was the wheel who said that. So that's it, all right? Always, always be generous. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off from the beautiful Northern Vermont. Have a mindful day.